Welcome back. So first up, there's no comms audio on this because um, the radio from the tower has just been over-modulated. Unfortunately, with a headset that I have in the helmet, I have to turn the volume up pretty loud and I just haven't been able to dial it in uh, for what it's picking up on the recorder, so it keeps over-modulating. Uh, anyway, there wasn't much to say there. It was just a bunch of other traffic around. I'm co coordinating with them. So the purpose of this test is to test the gear up after takeoff, but then also get up to pattern altitude and just level out there for a little bit and see if, uh, you know, sort of 60% power, 70% power, see where I can get the temperatures to settle at. So um, that's pretty much the goal of this one. It wasn't to try and, you know, see how fast I could go or anything like that, just to see where the temperatures would stabilize at. Uh, I had a bit of a roll on the um, climb out there again, but got it stabilized again. And this, I got quite a lot, lot more fuel in the tanks this time wondering if it still has something to do with that or potentially now the CG is a little bit more aft um, actually one of the other guys who I'm um, you know coordinating with there at True Flight was flying at the same time in his RV and I asked him what he thought the conditions were like and he said um, it was bumpy below 1500 so I only got to 1300 so um, a lot of the you know bumpiness in this ride I think can be attributed to that um, but as I said, I think I'm, for the next flight, I've got the CG set a little bit more forward uh, to see if that makes a difference. And the other thing I've done also too is I've drooped the ailerons a little bit and hopefully they'll be preloaded and potentially that will help uh, stabilizing as well. Uh, but overall, it wasn't bad. It climbs a lot better with the, uh, with the gear up right after takeoff, that's for sure. It definitely felt that. And, uh, you know, I... I um, got up to pattern altitude fairly quickly here didn't have any problems with that and uh, the one camera that I had out on the far right wing there actually wasn't tight or maybe something happened there it ended up basically turning around and facing backwards as you can see there which was kind of nice in the end because I can see how much that aileron is lifting and the other one is lifting as well too so I kind of want them to both be down a little bit so um, that actually came in handy to see that. And you see here, I'm, a, I'm above pattern altitude, which is a thousand feet. And uh, I just pulled the power back there. You can see I'm only at 12 gallons an hour, as opposed to 20 or 21. And it settles into 140 knots there quite readily. And you'll see in a little bit when I go over the logs and that, the temperatures were looking pretty good there. Didn't get the uh, engine temperature over 240 and the coolant temps were staying you know, below 200, but again, I need more time up in the air. So I get to extend my downwind here because there was some other traffic coming in on a long uh, straight in approach to 1.7, and uh, which was good because it gave me a little bit more time to stabilize. And I was thinking about staying in the pattern and climbing up and gaining a little bit more altitude. And I actually did climb here in a little bit that you'll see um, but then when I made the turn on base and I'd had the prop back and as you, well, you can probably already hear that I've got the prop back at 3400 here well the engine RPM's at 34, the prop's probably going to be at about 20, uh, 2200, something like that or 2100 um, when I was turning base I thought I heard what sounded like a bit of a droning sound coming from the rear of the aircraft, from the engine area. And so, because I was already turned on final, um, I made the decision to land instead, just in case there was something going on that I wasn't aware of. And it turns out that when I got it on the ground, that little parachute cover, and you'll see it in the end of this video, uh, the little strap cover that's on the left side of the air intake there had actually blown off and it's supposed to break away when the chute is attached. And I guess the, um, the epoxy that I put on there to glue it in place uh, wasn't enough to hold it. And so it just blew off and it didn't cause any problem, but I'm fairly sure that that opening was acting kind of like a whistle and it was creating this noise. And so, you know, just to err on the side of caution, I decided to land instead of go around again. Here's the temps there, you can see in that front end to cool there, so that's maintaining about a 20 degree alpha, or delta I should say, on that one. Um, so that's working pretty well. 
And uh, overall, everything else was good. I could have stayed up there quite happily um, with the uh, engine temps the way they were. And ultimately on the next flight I will. But um, So what I'm gonna do for the next flight, a little bit more forward CG. Um, as I said, I've got the ailerons um, adjusted to droop down a little bit, which I think will just get the, the nose down a little bit more. I still think that there's potentially um, vortices coming off of the, well I know there's vortices coming off the tips of the winglet, oh, sorry, the foreplane, and potentially those are swirling around on the main wing and causing um, a little bit of this rocking to go on here. Um, but you know, when I did that sunset flight, I didn't have any of any of that rocking going on, so I think a lot of it has to do with uh, how gusty or bumpy it is up in the air. And perhaps this aircraft, because of the weight of it, doesn't really feel the bumps that much, but the bumps in the air translate to a rolling motion, um, maybe because of the large winglets or something to do with the size of the fuselage or something like that. But I'm not, I don't feel like bumps per se, but you know, you can see there's a little bit of rocking going on there. Um, and I did have a little more fuel in the tank, so potentially that sort of sloshing around. And so I need to sort of um, take that into account. But, uh, gear down again, didn't have any problems with that. And uh, a little bit uh, low on the approach again, but I'm trying to, still trying to gauge my approach and uh, try not to come in slow because, you know, coming in slow, if it's going to be having a little bit of rocking motion for any reason, I don't want to be slow uh, on the approach. So I'm sort of keeping indicated airspeed there, at least 110 uh, on the approach and then aiming for a touchdown around about 90, um, 90 to 95 to put the mains down. And of course, as soon as the mains touch, the nose comes down as well. So immediately unloads the wings and then you're on the ground. So it's not gonna you know, bounce up again and uh, go flying once you've, as soon as you've touched those mains. You see the speed bleeding off here slowly, slowly, slowly. And that's where I should have touched down right about there, and then I sort of held it a little longer. I'm touching down at 87. I mean, it was a nice landing and stuff, but I'm just using up more runway than I need to. But we'll figure it out and get it all dialed in. Uh, but overall, didn't have any problems with that flight, apart from losing that. Uh, parachute cover and for everybody who was worried about that rolling shutter on that camera underneath the right wing last time that actually happened because that camera wasn't um, fully mounted tight and so it was sort of vibrating that's what was causing that effect so it's nothing to do with any sort of um, vibration on the wing per se so one of the things I still want to look at here is um the vortex is coming off of here, off of this guy, so on the edge of the foreplane here. Um, these will be swirling around like this, and I've seen one of the telltales here. Um, I think this one here actually showing in, inboard like this, so potentially that vortex is coming off here all the way to here and then suck, sucking this one in here like this. So I've added a couple more here to look and see what's going on there. But I think that vortex that's coming off here is coming back here. and and impacting the wing somewhere here and potentially uh, causing a problem so I've added a bunch more telltales around here so I can see if it's doing it every now and then when I had a couple of telltales here I saw this one lifting a little bit um, so I want to see if that's going on and obviously I've moved the CG forward a little bit more so it'll fly a little bit more nose down and potentially the vortex coming off of there will end up going um, below the wing here and as you can see, I've added this uh, Vortalon on here. Just taped it on here for now. I've got one on the other side, obviously. I taped it on here, but it's bolted on under here onto that existing um, bracket that was there. So, and then of course that's my camera mount on there. Um, but because it's only bolted on here right now, it has a little bit of ability to flex. I don't want to bond it on here yet until I know that I'm going to keep it for sure. So I've just put some tape on there to stop it from moving around. Um, so anyway, that's what's going on there, and then I, I noticed on that last flight there when I was rotating there, these telltales were coming up underneath here, so that stagnation point is basically up in under here, 
again there so that's when you're at high alpha and that's you know understandable and you know the idea of the wing here is that this has uh, a lower angle of attack on it about about zero degrees here compared to up here it's about three degrees and back here it's about two degrees so um, this area here should stall first and you know the, the strake should stall first and then this would be the last thing to stall out here and so you keep control of the aircraft so anyway um we'll just keep an eye on those telltales and see what's going on there for the next one and on that last flight there i actually lost that little cover there it's supposed to be a breakaway cover for if the parachute gets deployed and um i guess that the way we or the way i glued it on there maybe it just wasn't enough so it's a bit of a question you know how much glue do you have on there so i've just created a, a bit out of aluminum there and uh just taped it on so it'll tear away no problem at all um, if I have to deploy the parachute so um, that, that's not an issue right now but anyway I needed to fix that all right so here's the uh, log for that particular flight and as you can see there it was temperature already 150 I actually had to wait for um, somebody on the ramp there who was um, doing a run up there before I could go so my temp got to 150 I was hoping to you know go by 145 and I had to turn my heater loop on which actually sort of holds it around 145 um, and so I'm running my heater loop earlier than what I would like so that's already pulling that temperature up but anyway um, oil temperature comes up fairly quickly because um, you know that thermostat is is keeping everything uh, shut until it comes up to two, 217. That's how the Audi engine works. And then after that, um, just happens at the same time as when I pull the power back around about then. So then everything sort of stabilizes there. The coolant starts running in through the oil, um, water, or coolant uh, heat exchanger in the engine. So that um, you know stabilizes the oil temp. But at the same time, I pulled the power off. So at that point there, I'm at 223 degrees, and it just was taking like a long, 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 long time uh, to go up. So I was pretty happy about that. And you see I've got the power there, 56 milligrams, which uh, on the throttle there is 61% throttle. Um, and it's in terms of uh, fuel flow, it's uh, running there 12.9 gallons an hour, you know, as opposed to 20 or 21 at full power. Um, so as you can see here, the coolant temp just ramps up really slowly here. This uh, teal one there, and ultimately, you know, by the time I got back on the ground, it was only 198. Um, but you know, obviously, the largest, the larger delta I have on that between that and the oil temp is the, the better it's going to pull the oil temps down. And you see, the oil temp there got to 240, and you know, I'm I'm okay with it going to sort of 255 or whatever, just sort of briefly. So I still had lots of headroom there. Um, and so I had leveled out and then I started climbing a little bit more. That's where it sort of starts going up here again. When I started climbing, I had pretty much the same power in there, but because I nosed up a little bit, I was going slower. And so then the um, coolant temp is still ramping. Well, and, and, and maybe just because the coolant temp is still coming up to what would be the normal temperature there. And because, uh, you know, at some point there, that delta is just going to remain whatever it is, 50 degrees. So, you know, if I end up stabilizing the coolant temps at 200, maybe the oil temps for that power setting is going to be 250, doesn't matter what I do. Uh, but overall, uh, you know, I've got the temperatures comfortable enough that I can climb up to pattern altitude and then sort of con continue a sort of slow climb right now. So I'll, um, the next flight I'll be taking a little bit further beyond that, uh, climb up higher and then, uh, you know, get it level again, stabilize it and then start doing a few things like, you know, uh, seeing what the fuel burn is for a given airspeed and um, you know making some adjustments to the prop uh, pitch setting just to see how that affects air speeds and everything like that and then ultimately you know doing some runs a little bit quicker each time just to see um, what sort of speeds I'm getting for fuel flows and things like that uh, so overall everything looked pretty good and as you can see here the um, turbine inlet temps or the EGTs got to 1670 which I'm okay with that and then they, um, you know, when, when I, the first thing I did after, once I climbed out there, instead of pulling the power back, I just pulled the prop back a little bit. Um, so you can see I went from sort of 3,900, th high, eight, high 38s, 3,900 on the engine, down to about 3,600s. 
And then I pulled the power back a little bit. That's right about there. I went from 90 to like 88. Um, or I should say 100% throttle to sort of about 92% throttle. And then I pulled uh, the prop, oh, the, sorry, the power back a little bit more down to 62% throttle. And then just after that, pulled the prop back to 35. So the engine was 3,500. And then ultimately pulled it back a little bit more. So the engine was 3,400. And that's pretty much where it stayed for the rest of the flight there. I didn't really make any adjustments um, with those power settings. So I was just trying to have, you know, keep something constant there and see how everything else works around that. I'm not sure what these blips are on those temp sensors there. I think that's something in the ECU causing that because I don't think that the temperature changes that quickly coming out of the turbo for any reason. I've seen those before. Um, but other than that, you know, everything stabilized there with those temperatures. Um, the oil temp was you know, fairly stabilizing. I think it would have probably ended up about 245. Um, and then you know, obviously the coolant temp just ramping slowly there and that's you know pretty much was going to end up there anyway I think so uh, yeah that's pretty much uh, everything that's going on in the engine there nothing really else to see or to show right now so um, next flight as I said will be uh, up in the climbing up a little higher and uh, stabilizing everything again and just uh, starting to get some performance numbers and also let's see how this uh, the stability is hopefully I can get up to where the air is nice and smooth um, and then just really see if there is any um, sort of uncontrolled roll happening. Um, you know, at this point, I think if it is, it's, it's coming from these vortices coming off of the foreplane. So we'll see how that plays out anyway. Just a quick update. And uh, I know it's going to get boring because I'm doing the same thing and you're just doing these, you know, a little bit incremental change on the flight each time. But, um, you know, this is what it's all about. Just doing incremental stuff, making little tweaks and changes and then logging everything and then moving on to the next step. So that's my update and hopefully I'll be flying again tomorrow and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.